Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've been doing these videos now for about nine years, believe it or not. And one of the topics I talk about the most is civil asset forfeiture. And it's one of those things that I still encounter people daily who see one of my videos and go, I can't believe this is happening in America. The idea that the police encounter you, they go, oh, you've got cash on you. We'll just take that and we'll say that you're probably either committing a crime with it or going to commit a crime with it, or it's the fruit of some kind of crime. And if you want your money back, you can sue us. And if you sue us and win, you get your money back. If you sue us and lose, we get to keep your money. And of course, if you sue us at all, you got to pay your own attorney fees. So it puts a situation into a posture where it's often not worth fighting, except on principle. And it incentivizes the police to look for stuff they can take and then just go, well, go ahead and sue us. So a lot of people say, Steve, why doesn't the U.S. Supreme Court just put an end to this? It appears to be such a horrible, horrible violation of, I don't know, the Fifth Amendment, uh, due process and takings and all that. And, uh, well, strangely, the Supreme Court over the years has ruled on it from time to time. And so hopefully, if we get it in front of them, someone might go, you know, maybe this is wrong. Maybe we can actually straighten out a major problem with the uh, jurisprudence uh, in America. And so a lot of people sent me a note about this one. The Supreme Court is going to decide whether you have a right to a prompt hearing after cops seize your property. Now, this is from Reason.com, and C.J. Ciramella wrote this, and I, and I often talk about this guy because he's always covering these topics, and he does a wonderful job of it. And you'll notice that they're not even asking just yet for the Supreme Court to say that civil asset forfeiture is wrong, and, and people are going to criticize it and go, why don't they? Well, that'll come up. But the bigger issue that has arisen over the years, and it's something that apparently the courts could address, is that they will often take something from somebody and then say, okay, you want it back, we'll have a hearing. And then you don't get a hearing for a year or two. And so there have been examples of people, for instance, who had their cars taken and there weren't hearings for a year or so. And so the question is, is that delay legal? And so the Supreme Court has agreed to hear two consolidated cases out of Alabama by women whose cars were both seized for more than a year before courts found that they were innocent owners and they got their cars back. But it took more than a year in each case. So the question is, do you have a right to a prompt hearing after the government seizes your property? Because generally speaking, as you know, you've got the right to a speedy trial. If you get arrested, you can say, I demand a speedy trial. Now, your definition of speedy and the government's definition of speedy might be two different things. But simply saying it's going to take more than a year for a hearing on whether you get your car back, that's not a full-blown trial. It's just a hearing. So that should be something they can do more quickly. The Supreme Court has agreed to hear the case called Cully versus the Attorney General of Alabama. And those are two cases consolidated regarding property owners and whether they have a due process right to a hearing to determine if police had probable cause to seize their property. Now, this issue might seem esoteric, as C.J. Sermela says, but it's hugely important to people who've had their property seized by police under civil asset forfeiture laws. Under those, police can take property suspected of being connected to criminal activity, even if the owner hasn't been charged with a crime. Property owners then often have the burden of going to court and proving their innocence, a process that can take months and sometimes years. And I've mentioned before, and I did a video about this a while back, there's a a case out of Michigan, of all places, where a man was alleged to have solicited a prostitute, I believe, while in a car. Okay, pulls up, sees a woman, hey, how you doing? And uh, well, it turns out the car wasn't his. Uh, The car actually, I believe, belonged to his wife. And so when the police arrested him, they seized the car. And he said, well, it's not my car. And his wife said, that's not his car. And the U.S. Supreme Court said, yeah, but it was used during the commission of a crime. Therefore, it can be forfeited. So, sorry. So the Supreme Court's already ruled on that. Now, could they change their minds? Yeah, they do that occasionally. (laughs) They've done that recently. But will they? It's very, very uncommon. So... Here's the two cases at issue. In the first one, a woman's son was pulled over by police in Alabama 
while driving his mother's car. He was arrested and charged with possession of marijuana and paraphernalia. And the city seized the car belonging to the mother. It took her 20 months, 20 months during all of which she was left without a vehicle before a state court ruled that she was entitled to the return of the car under Alabama's innocent owner defense. So there is a defense in Alabama, obviously not in Michigan, but in Alabama, (laughs) at least not at the time in Michigan, but in Alabama, there's an innocent owner defense. And if you can prove that you had nothing to do with the crime and it's your thing that was seized, they got to give it back to you. So they wait 20 months to have a hearing. And there's a saying about justice delayed is justice denied. And so the entire time she had no car. In the second case, a friend of a woman took her car to run an errand in 2019, and he was pulled over by police in Alabama who found meth in the car and seized it. She also eventually was granted summary judgment on an innocent owner defense, which means that the court looked at it and said, there's, no, there's, <laughs> there's nothing here other than this person's an innocent owner. But it took them more than a year to get that hearing. And if you think this is an accident, think again. They do these hearings as slowly as possible because they, they're trying to get people to give up. They want people to give up and say, fine, I'll walk away from it. It's just a car. And that way the state can then auction it off and keep the money or do whatever they want with it. These sorts of long delays have been documented all around the country. Uh, in 2018, three Detroit residents filed a class action lawsuit alleging that Wayne County police and prosecutors seized their cars and forced them to wait months and years for hearings. Two years later, the Institute for Justice those people I talk about all the time, filed another class action lawsuit challenging Wayne County's asset forfeiture program, including its practice of not providing defendants with prompt post-seizure hearings. The law in Michigan does grant you a hearing. Uh, And they're just saying, well, doesn't mean you get a hearing today. You just get one later on down the road. The government should not be able to take your car without providing you with a prompt opportunity to challenge the seizure says a senior attorney at the Institute for Justice. In criminal cases, after the government arrests you, it must hold a probable cause hearing shortly after the arrest so a judge can make a preliminary determination about whether the arrest was legitimate. The government should provide the same kind of prompt hearing after it takes your property. And Wayne County people are going to say, well, we can't do these hearings promptly because we're just overwhelmed. Well, that's your problem. That's not the problem of the people that you are abusing along the way because you're overwhelmed. The specific question before the Supreme Court here is which test courts should apply when determining if someone's 14th Amendment right to due process was violated by being deprived of a prompt hearing in a case like this. The U.S. Court of Appeals, the 11th Circuit, which has jurisdiction over Alabama, has held that the speedy trial test Uh, applies, and that due process is satisfied by the civil forfeiture process itself. However, every other circuit that's weighed in on the issue uses a different balancing test established in a 1976 Supreme Court case to determine due process violations. That case is called Matthews versus Eldridge. So two cases out of Alabama, those people both filed lawsuits claiming that towns violated their 8th and 14th Amendment rights by depriving them of their cars for months when a pretrial hearing to establish probable cause for the seizures could have quickly determined they were innocent owners under Alabama law. The 11th Circuit rejected those claims, saying the state's process satisfied the requirements for a timely hearing under the speedy trial test. Alabama Attorney General filed a brief opposing the Supreme Court petition, arguing there is no circuit split on the issue and that the women had no constitutional right to an additional hearing. And uh, he wrote, as an initial matter, petitioners' innocent owner status does not entitle them to special solicitude under either test. For centuries, this court has confirmed that in rem civil forfeitures need not inquire into the guilt or innocence of the property's owner, only the use of the property itself in a prohibited act. That Alabama chose to enact statutory protections for innocent owners thus does not entitle those owners to heightened constitutional protections. In rem is uh, another Latin phrase that lawyers like to toss around. What he's talking about here is that 
the seizure of the car is treated as an action against the car itself. So when someone has their car seized and then they are arrested in that process, and so there's an arrest and the car seizure. And as pointed out both of these times, the car belonged to somebody else. And he's saying, well, look, this person who's arrested is entitled to a speedy trial. The thing is not. The thing is only entitled to whatever the law says it's entitled to, and our law says they're entitled to a hearing, and eventually the thing will get a hearing. And that's the kind of reasoning, and I, and I'm, by the way, I'm an attorney, for the two of you who didn't know that, I'm an attorney in the state of Michigan, I've been practicing law 32 years now. Yeah, 32 years. I lose track from time to time. And that's the kind of reasoning that people look at and go, do attorneys think that way? And here's the thing. Most attorneys I know think that civil asset forfeiture is bogus. It's nonsense. It's stupid. It's one of the worst things in American law. It might be the worst thing, but it's one of the worst things. And however, here's a guy who's an AG, attorney general, and he's representing the state and the state passed a law and he's taking this position that, well, this law says you get a hearing. As long as you get one eventually, eh, good enough. And underlying that, like I said, is the rationale that, well, it's not you we're depriving of your rights. It's this thing. And the thing doesn't really have rights. So, and I agree it's nonsense. It's utter nonsense. So if you think that's the fault of the lawyers and the way lawyers think, I apologize on behalf of all lawyers. There's 35,000 lawyers in Michigan, probably more by now. We multiply. So <laughs> the Supreme Court could do the right thing here. Could. We'll see. We'll see. So from Reason.com, C.J. Ciramella wrote the article. He mentions the Institute for Justice because they're involved in a lot of these cases. And I'm going to suggest again that you take a look at the work they do. And if you find it in your hearts to support them, do that because they're a nonprofit supported entirely by people donating money to help the cause because the causes they go after are so righteous. So the Institute for Justice are great people and I love the work they do. I also like Reason.com and C.J. Ciramella, who's on top of this also. So there you go. Supreme Court will decide whether you have a right to a prompt hearing after cops seize your property or in the alternative as postured by the AG of Alabama. The Supreme Court's going to decide whether or not your stuff has a right to a prompt hearing. And he says no. So there you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. A journey is measured in friends rather than miles.